Welcome back to the Accounting Cycle Practice Set. This is the Practice Set Part B. In this part, we will continue with the same worksheet and the same instructions, but we'll just continue um, on to Part B. In this part, we will work on preparing adjustments in the worksheet, prepare the adjusted trial balance columns in the worksheet, prepare the adjusting journal entries in the general journal, page two, and then post the adjusting journal entries to the general ledger and calculate new balances. All right, let's get started. First, we'll get started by bringing up the instructions. See, here I am, I have the instructions open. This is page two. And find the section that says practice step part B. So um, we'll be doing steps six, seven, eight, and nine. So six is to prepare adjustments in the worksheet. We have three adjustments that we will need to do. Then we'll do the adjusted trial balance, prepare the entries, and post them to the general ledger. Okay, so um, we're going to prepare the adjustments in the worksheet. We started the worksheet in the last part and we did our trial balance columns. So let's go ahead and post our first um, adjustment. So during August, Gloria performed services for clients which were not billed for $2,750. What that means is she performed the services, so she satisfied the performance obligation. So she needs to bill her customers, and then they will pay her later for those services. All right, so let's pull up our worksheet. I am on the worksheet tab for the practice set which is the third tab. And as you can see, here's where we left off last time. We have our unadjusted trial balance columns and they agree. So we have to post our first entry. It was letter A. So let's talk about um, what happened. Gloria performed services. She now needs to bill her clients so she can get paid later. So since she's performed the services, she has satisfied that performance obligation and she will um, credit her revenue account. Revenue accounts increase on the credit side. So we'll put an A here to indicate that it's entry A and we're going to do $2,750. Now her customers did not pay her at the time she performed the service. Instead, they're going to pay her later or she'll receive that cash later, and so we will re, um, be using accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset account. Asset accounts increase on the debit side. I've also indicated um, this entry with an A, so now you can see these two match, and the dollars match, and my totals match. So we're in good shape. Let's go back to the instructions for the next adjustment. So during the last two weeks of August, the cleaning staff worked 20 hours but did, will not be paid until September. The hourly rate is $12.50, and it says accrue only the wages. Okay, so um, when it says accrue only the wages, that means we have to record in the books and records that the employee worked 20 hours but won't be paid till next um, fiscal period. So let's first calculate out how much are we going to pay that employee, okay? So that employee worked 20 hours and the hourly wage for the employee is $12.50 and so that is equal to $250, okay? So that is how much we need to accrue. So let's go over to our worksheet. All right, so our employee worked that whenever we have an expense, that's something that we do or someone does to earn our revenue, right? So that becomes an expense. So the employee works, so that's wages expense, it's $250. And we're going to indicate that with a B because it's the second entry or it's entry B, and then we will pay that later, right? We're going to pay that in the next fiscal uh, period, which is September, and so we will be using wages payable, and there I've indicated that with a B as well. All right, so we've got our two of our entries done, um, 
And our last one is at the end of the month, there was $25 in office supplies remaining. All right, let's go to our worksheet for a minute. Okay, so we started the period with $75 in supplies. And right now, we only have $25 remaining. So if we started with 75 and I only have 25 left, that means that we used $50. Now, this account has, has a debit balance. It's an asset. We used the supply, so I have to reduce that account by $50. That's what we used. But now I have to record it in an expense, right? Because um, expenses help us earn our revenue. So I'm going to put $50 in the debit side because that's how um, expense accounts increase is with a debit. And um, I will indicate that with a C. So now we can see this is entry C, entry B, entry A. My columns agree. Perfect. That is Part six completed, okay? So we've got six all done. Next, we're gonna move to part seven. Prepare the adjusted trial balance columns in the worksheet. Okay, so what that means is now we have to add across. So we take what we began with. So this is our beginning, our unadjusted trial balance. We have some adjustments. So we have to include those in the balance and then we get our adjusted trial balance. And that makes, we have to make sure that our debits equal our credits. So I have for cash, I have a debit of $5,025, no adjustment, and my balance stays the same. Accounts receivable, I started with zero. I have a debit adjustment for 2,750, which gives me a debit balance of 2,750. Now, we're gonna move down to supplies. We had a debit balance of 75. We've reduced that balance by $50 by crediting it. So now I have a debit balance of $25. I hope that makes sense. So we started with a debit of 25. We credited it by $50 to, to show that we used the $50. Leaves us $25 in that account. Next is accounts payable. We started with a balance of 75. There was no adjustment, so we still have a credit balance of 75. Wages payable, we started with a zero balance. We have an adjustment of $250 to indicate the wages that we will pay next month. So now I have a credit balance of $250. Um, the next one is G. Spencer Capital. No adjustments, was a credit balance of 3,000. So we still have a credit balance of 3,000. G. Spencer drawing, debit balance of 800, no adjustment. So we still have that same balance. And it's a debit balance because it decreases equity. Service revenue, we started with 3,250. We then had, we accrued additional uh, revenue. So now I have to add those together. So that gives me total revenue of $6,000 that was earned during the month of August. Next, we have rent expense, $225 on the debit side, no adjustment. So I still have $225 on the debit side. Wages expense, we started with $200 in the debit side. We accrued an additional $250 in the expense. Now I have $450 as that expense in that expense account. Supplies, we started with zero. We then added an additional $50 to that. And now we have a debit of $50 in that column. And our adjusted trial balance columns agree. That means we posted everything correctly. So that is part two, I'm sorry, part seven or step seven in part B completed, and our check figure says that it should equal 9,325, 9,325, we are good to go. Okay, step six and seven are complete, so now we must prepare the adjusting journal entries on tab general journal page two. So let's go ahead 
and go back to our worksheet. Click on General Journal, page 2. And here we are. It says Adjusting Journal Entries on the top. So let's type in our month, August 31. So whenever we do adjustments, they're always dated the last day of the month. Same with our closing entries. They're always dated the last day of the month. Okay. So entry A, accounts receivable for 2750 and a credit to service revenue for 2750 So type accounts receivable. And service revenue. to accrue revenue. All right, that's A down. The next one will also be on the same day, August 31st. We'll go to the worksheet. And B is a debit to wages expense and a credit to wages payable. Okay, so let's go to the, this tab. So we're going to debit wages expense for two fifty, and we will credit wages payable also for two fifty to accrue wages. Okay, that's the second one done. Okay, so the third one will also be on the 31st of August. Let's go to the worksheet. C is a debit to supplies expense and a credit to supplies. So we're going to debit supplies expense. And that's $50. And we're going to credit the supplies account. $50. And this is to record supplies used. Excellent. So now we can say that eight, preparing the adjusting journal entries on general journal page two is completed. All we have left is to post those entries to our general ledger. Okay, so then let's go back to our Excel sheet. We're going to go back to the, um, so our first entry is a debit to accounts receivable receivable for 2750 Let's go to general ledger. Okay, so here's our accounts receivable account. It's account 102. So we have August 31. It's coming from J2, right? Because this is general journal page 2. It's a debit for $2,750. And that gives us a balance of $2,750. Okay, so this is account 102. We're going to go back to here, and we'll put 102. That indicates it's been posted. Next is service revenue. It's a credit for $2,750. So let's find service revenue. Okay, here we are. We already have the month August, so all we have to indicate is the 31st. J2, $2,750. That then gives us a balance of $6,000. Oops, that was account 401. We indicate 401, so we know it's been posted. Two entries remaining. So the next one is wage expense, and it's a debit for $250. So let's find wage expense. Indicate the 31st, J2. And that is going to be 250 which gives me a balance of $450. This is account 502, so we'll go back here and we'll put 502, and that has been posted. Next, we have wages payable, credit of $250, so let's find wages payable. And there's no month, so we have to indicate August 31. 
coming from J2. And that's a credit for $250, gives us a balance of $250. Account 202, and we put 202 here. Oop. One entry remaining, supplies expense, a debit for $50. So let's find supplies expense. and that's $50 on the debit. So let's go back to here, and we indicate that it was account number 503, and then we have supplies. So we find our supplies account, 31, J2, crediting it for $50, that gives us a balance of two, gives us a balance of $25. It's account 103. So let's go back, we indicate 103. And now all of our adjusting journal entries have been posted. So we prepared our adjustments in the worksheet. We prepared our adjusted trial balance columns to make sure all of our debits and our credits balanced out. Then we prepared the adjusting journal entries in the journal, and it was journal, general journal page two. That's why we, we referenced J2. And then we posted all of our entries to the general ledger and calculated our new balances. That's it. Step B is now complete.